Hello, this is the second part of battery thermal modeling and ROM generation video. In part 1, we saw steps 1 and 2 of ROM generation. In this video, we see steps 3 and 4. To start step 3, open Twin Builder. From Twin Builder menu, go to Toolkit and Thermal Model Identification. Here, set the number of inputs and outputs. So for example, I had three inputs and two outputs. I also set the step res file format to fluent. In the response slash input file location, I copy the path where the LTI folder is generated. I keep the default for the rest of the options and click on Generate. Now in Component Libraries, under Project Components, you will notice that Thermal underscore ROM underscore SML appear. Click on that and drag and drop it on the screen. As you will see here, I have the three inputs and the two outputs. Now I can define any kind of inputs, but for the sake of this example, I just choose constant volumetric heat and constant current and generate the outputs. Here I can search CONST for constant and choose this block and drop it three times on the screen. Now I'm going to connect the, the first two blocks to input 1 and input 2. For the last one, I'm going to also add a square block. The reason for that is that power has a linear relationship with a square of current. Next, I'm going to assign some values to my inputs. For input 1, I enter a value of 20 Watt. For input 2, I enter a value of 80 Watt. And for input 3, I enter a value of 250 Ampere. Now from Project Manager, I open Twin Builder 1, right click on Results, and create a standard report and I create a rectangular plot. Here again, I select the two outputs and click on New Report. Then from Analysis, I double click on TR and change the end time, mean time step and max time step to the values that you see on the screen and click on OK. Then I right click on Analyze and select Analyze. The ROM calculation should take only a few seconds. Once the calculation is finished, you can see the plots of temperature rise for each cell versus time. You see that as time passes, the temperature of each cell increases until it reaches a steady state. Now let's move on to the fourth step, which is ROM validation. In this step, I read in the case and data file that Fluent writes automatically at the end of step 2. The name of the files should be lti-rom-initial underscore file. The data file has the results of a steady state simulation of water flow in the cooling plate that we ran in step 1. We use this result file to initialize the transient thermal simulation of the battery in step 4. Here, I open battery model. In battery model panel, under model parameters, I enter the same input values I use in twin builder. So 20 watt for input 1, 80 watt for input 2, and 250 for input 3. 
I click on apply and then initialize. Then I'm going to create two report definition for the volumetric temperature of cell one and cell two. From controls and equations, confirm that only energy and user scalar equations are selected. We do not solve the flow equations because we assume that the time scale of flow is much smaller than the time scale of solid. So the change of temperature in the solid parts of the battery do not affect the water flow. This is now ready to solve. So I click on calculate. Once fluent calculation is finished, we can import the average volumetric temperature monitor points that we generated earlier in Twin Builder for a comparison. I have already imported these monitor points here, and as you can see, ROM results matches very well with high fidelity CFD results. With this, I wrap up this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you and have a good day.